Hi, today we're talking about extracting stills pictures from video clips. It's something I've talked about before in my YouTube films. The first time was when I filmed a song thrush pulling up an earthworm and the song thrush was leaning right back so the worm was really stretched and that is a stills picture that I've wanted for years and it doesn't actually occur all that often when a thrush pulls a worm up it normally breaks it off as it's pulling it but here we had a long stretch and although I was very pleased to get it as a video clip I also wanted stills pictures so I demonstrated how you could take a stills picture from that video clip and I even uploaded it to the Alamy Picture Library website just to demonstrate that it does have the quality and that's 4k video I've also done it with a ring goozle picture where I didn't get enough stills pictures of the the male bird and today I'm going to use the GH6 but for the first time I'm going to shoot 6k video which I've never done before and we'll see how we get on with that with extracting stills pictures from it so I've got myself a bit of beach, it's the second week of November now, so the leaves are about to fall and it's very very colourful and just a couple of feeders just to give me some nice perches for the birds to come and land on and see what sort of quality we get from 6k video. So from the hide I'm going to be using the Olympus 150 to 400 mil and I'm going to start off by taking some still pictures using the OM-1 camera body. This will give me a reference point, something to compare the video still pictures from real still pictures. Just common garden birds, great tits, blue tits, cold tits coming in. And I start off doing them quite small in the frame and then get bigger. It's a cloudy, bright day. I'm shooting at my standard ISO setting, which is 1600. Shutter speed doesn't really matter here. These birds aren't moving, they're static. Thousands of a second, two thousands of a second. It really doesn't make much difference. Lens aperture wide open. Now there's an obvious difference as soon as you start shooting video. First of all, it takes the video a while to get going. You take a stills picture, you press the button, it's instant, you get a picture. But the video, it's half a second after you press the button before the video is actually rolling. And also the autofocus in video mode is much slower. That can take another half a second or even one second before it brings it into focus. This blue tit is actually static for much longer than normal. But look at this bird, it's out of focus when I first got the video running. You've got to wait. In stills mode, that would be instant. And for birds that don't stay still for very long, that is quite a problem. Whichever video editing software you use, there will be a method of extracting a stills picture. This is PowerDirector, which is the main video editing software I use. I find it very simple and intuitive. So we select a video clip that looks like it might be suitable, which is this one here. So then we can see this clip in the right hand main viewing window. I go forward a few frames until the composition looks a bit better. And then to take a stills picture, very simple. There's a camera button over here. We simply press that and it will save a JPEG of that frame. I'm going to save that JPEG into the folder where I'm putting all the video clips and stills for this particular video. And I'll give it a file name. I'm going to call it Great It 23 for no particular reason. As well as saving the file to that folder, it will also have imported it, so it will be amongst these thumbnails. There it is, great tit 23. So I can import that picture now into my timeline. And there it's looking quite good, but that's not really what I want to do with it. So now we're going to open that picture up in Photoshop. And having done so, we'll look at the image size. And 5,760 pixels along the top edge of the picture. That is a comparable size to most digital cameras today. The image quality, it's certainly looking very good. There's not a lot of noise there in the background. There's lots of feather detail. Perhaps I wish I'd been shooting half a stop underexposed when I took this bit of video. Maybe give me a, a bit more detail in the white cheek. Now all of the stills pictures that I showed were all processed using Topaz Photo AI. 
I've been using DxO Pure Raw for some time now and been very very pleased with it except for one thing DxO Pure Raw changes my file names and I find that very frustrating I really do not want my file names changed my file names are very important to me and I want to choose what they are so after I run DxO Pure Raw I then have to batch rename the files again so when Topaz bought out the Photo AI, which is a very similar product, I gave it a go and that doesn't change my file names. They both produce a very similar output, it's hard to tell them apart in terms of the noise reduction, they're both excellent, it's just that Topaz doesn't change my file names, so I've started using that instead. Now I seem to remember reading that Topaz is much better working on raw files than on JPEGs or TIFFs. Nevertheless, we're going to give it a go. We're going to run it on this JPEG extracted from the video. It's very quick and it's very automated, which is what I like about it. I normally run it in batch mode on all of the raw files that I'm going to keep. And it automatically decides what it needs to do. So you can see it's ticked two boxes here. It's going to denoise and it's going to sharpen. Now I've noticed that when I run this on my rules, it never sharpens but it's decided to do so. It's got rid of some noise. The right hand picture is the improved picture. And yes, it's a little bit better and it's a little bit sharper, but maybe too sharp. So we'll just save that picture. And I've also darkened it just a touch. And we'll just zoom in. This is the one without Topaz and this is the one with Topaz and slightly darkened. But more importantly, let's look at three pictures here. The middle one is a stills picture taken as a raw file. The left hand and the right hand ones are the picture that I extracted from the video. The left hand one has had Topaz run on it and the right hand one hasn't. They're all very good. They're all sharp. I think I prefer the unsharpened right hand one as a picture extracted from the video. I think the one that Topaz did was too sharp. The middle one, the raw file, perhaps it has got a sort of edge to it. There's less noise in the background with that picture, but they are all very good. It's just the video has that disadvantage of being slow to get going when you first press the button and then much slower on the autofocus. There's one other issue with extracting stills pictures from video. When you're shooting video, your shutter speed should be twice that of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you should have a 60th of a second shutter speed. And that's a bit slow. For blue tits and great tits, even when they're sitting still on a branch, a 60th of a second is not really fast enough. And I wouldn't expect to get that many sharp individual frames at that shutter speed. So for this exercise, I ignored that rule and I shot at a faster shutter speed, 1,000th of a second, which should be fast enough for any of those pictures where the bird is still on the branch. Now that means the video, in theory, shouldn't look so good. It should look flickery because the shutter speed is too fast and the frames are too sharp. They don't dissolve into each other. But that's the theory. That's what I've read. It's still something I haven't got round to proving for myself yet. But anyway, thanks for watching.